What's going on, guys? Welcome back to the channel. Dave, Dave's RC here, guys, reminding you to fly for your die. Uh, home of free giveaways, guys. We've got a giveaway coming up this week, Friday, the 30th. You're there. Uh, so today what we're going to do, guys, is uh, you guys uh, that were on the show last week on, on Total Line on Friday, what we did was, uh, let's see. Well, I'm just seeing what's going on over here. Okay, all right, so yeah, there's some weird stuff going on with my laptop. We're actually taking it in here shortly to have it fixed uh, or cleaned out and get some type of antivirus put on. But anyways, for those of you guys that were there on the show, Wreck'em Roy, I see you in here. What's up, man? Shadow Ops, what's up, man? Uh, so what we're going to do today, right now, is we're going to program the AS3X on the, uh, on the uh, F-35 here, you guys. It's a very simple process to do. Um, you just have to... Uh, First off, bind the plane, which we've already done, and then you have to get into your forward programming. And uh, from there, it's pretty simple. You're just going to have to uh, have the plane flat like it is now. We're going to have to hit a button. It's going to log it in that this is the flat side, and then we're going to have to put the plane up on its nose. And it's it's you're going to want the plane up on its nose pretty pretty evenly, guys. So it's kind of hard to do to want you know with two hands because you the idea to have somebody. Um, hold the plane for you nice and steady while you're programming it, but I'm going to have to do it by myself, um, which is fine. Uh, I've done it with three other planes already. We've done it with the Hawker Hunter. We've done it with, um, we've done it. Oh, so this will be the third plane. We've done it with the, uh, with the plane behind me, the, um, the Venom. We've done it with the Hawker Hunter and this will be the third plane that we're doing it with. So, um, we have set it up. One thing that you're going to want to know guys is when you do this, um, the gyro is automatically going to be set up with its own throws that it, it, it wants to have. So, and it has your rudders at like 60% throw or 80% throw or something like that. And, uh, if you have your rudders up that high, you are going to get over correction and the back of your plane is going to start swaying as you're flying. It's going to scare the absolute crap right out of you. So basically after you program the plane, what you want to do is you want to go into your settings and turn that rudder gyro down. Uh, turn down your aileron gyro, turn down your elevator gyro because they are going to be too high. The plane is going to rock and roll in the sky and uh, it's going to be quite terrifying. The only time you get any relief is when you cut the throttle and put her into a glide mode. Uh, any type of power that you put to the plane and she is going to wobble all over the place on you and it's not fun. Uh, so with that being said, we're going to jump into it, you guys. I'm going to start off with the uh, 4000 Smart Pack. We're going to put it in here. We're going to strap it in. And uh, first off, we're going to find out where the CG is. After, after we get it programmed, we're going to find out where the CG is for both batteries. Um, so, yeah, let's get into it, guys. Uh, if you guys are in here, I appreciate you guys stopping by. Uh, remember, guys, this weekend is the giveaway. So the, the Super Chats and the, uh, and the PayPal are both open, you guys. Um, we uh, we we uh, we had an awesome donation come in, you guys. I just want to give a shout out to that real quick. Uh, this was huge, you guys. So um, I just wanted to give a really quick shout out to that person that uh, that dropped that he dropped a hundred dollar uh, PayPal, you guys, for the giveaway this weekend, which is which was awesome. That was absolutely awesome of him to do that. Um, and sorry if I get your name right, but his name's Mike Rimbitas. So Mike Rimbitas, thank you so much for that, for that. Um, uh, we definitely appreciate it, man. And it does go a long way with the giveaways that we do on, uh, uh, once a month. So that, that being said, let's jump into this and get this thing programmed. All right, you guys. So first things first, we're going to kick on our, our radio here. We're going to turn on the DX9. We're going to come up here. And I'm just putting a 4,000 in for right now, you guys, um, just for getting the thing set up. Everything is nice and glued in now. Everything has been sitting for a few days. So uh, everything's nice and snuggly wugglies in there. Wreck'em Roy, I hope you enjoyed the plane that you got, bro. I haven't watched your video yet. I'm anticipating watching it. Uh, I can't wait to. Uh, it's going to be awesome, man. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and plug in the plane. Now, we've already bound the plane up, guys, right? Just want to make sure she stays nice and still while she's doing this, even though the AS3X. Boom. Now we're in good shape here, guys. So now what we're going to do 
since we're going to get into our radio here, okay, guys? I'm going to try to show you as best I can here, okay, by standing up here with the plane. But we're going to go into forward programming, you guys. Now, here's your forward programming. We're going to get into the forward programming. Okay, the first thing it's going to do is say gyro settings. First time setup, okay? If it doesn't work the first time, you guys, just, just reset the whole thing and try it again. When you're here, if you can see, it says make sure the model is being configured, including wing type, reversing, travel. So you want all that to be done before continuing. Now, we've already done that. We've already set that up. So we're going to go to continue. Now, turn the servo, sir. Okay. There we go. Okay. Continue, set orientation. Set, uh, okay, so continue. Now it's going to say set the model on its nose and press the continue. Okay, so this is the hard part, guys, when you're by yourself. Okay, so the best thing you can do is just get the plane and get, get the radio in front of you laying down. You want to have the radio laying down. Okay, what's huge here, guys, is the plane cannot move around, really. I mean, you have to be really still with it, okay, or it's going to mess up and you're going to have to redo it. Uh, the best way that I figured to do this is I literally put the plane in between my legs and I squeeze the nose of the plane with my legs. So now, boom, right here. You see that? The plane is actually being held up with my legs. So I barely have to hold it here. So the plane straight up and down on its nose right here. We're going to scroll down and we're going to hit continue. Boom, stand by. Okay, first time set up, continue orientation. Now it's reading. Hold on. Receiver is rebooting. And that should be it, you guys. Let's see. So the only way to test it and see if it worked, and we might have to do this a couple times. You never know. It just depends. Uh, so we're going to rev this up to about 30, half, 35%. And then see if it came on. If it didn't come on, there might be a switch that we need to hit. And I think the switch, the, the switch was up here, I believe. I believe the switch was up there. Hold on. And we, like I said, we might have to do it again. You never know. It just depends. Um, so now we got to go into... All right, and then uh, we're not setting up safe. We're just doing AS3X. So AS3X setting. And like I said, there's the yaw, man. It's way up. So we're going to turn our yaw down about 10%. And then we're going to go up to our pitch. We're going to turn that pitch down to about 25 and then roll. We're going to turn that down to about 25 as well. And that's a good start. That's a good starting point for anyone. You guys, um, All right, so here, now, now we're going to redo it. Okay, so now we've got the model setting down level. Actually, hold on. All right, now that's level. Okay, we're going to hit continue to set that orientation. Now we're going to go to the nose. Okay, so it wanted me to redo it for some reason, you guys, which is fine. Like I said, you might have to redo it, which is fine.
All right, so I just heard I just heard the AS3 kick on, man. Now we got to find out what switch it's on, because it could be on a different switch uh, from the last one that I did. So we're gonna receivers rebooted. Everything's working there. I'm not sure what the bot, what this, what what switch it is for the uh, what it what it goes to, what switch it goes to. But all right, so it's not that one. Let's see, it's not that switch. No, it's not that switch either. So we'll go in and find out what switch we have it on. I just did this on the... Um, I just did this. So I, I, I know... AS3X settings, there we go. Gains. So those are our gains. Okay, so we want to go back. Gain sensitivity. We actually might have to go into our... Um, oh, here we go. Gain channel select. Here we go. Okay, so... Okay, so yes. Okay, so we're going to have to put it on an auxiliary channel. So, since how this is only a five channel aircraft, we'll go auxiliary two. Actually, hold on. No, wait a minute. So, no, wait, wait, wait. Redo. All right, we'll just go to inhibit. Inhibit. Now we'll go back out of this and we'll go to channel. We'll go to our channel. We'll go to. Uh, We'll go to system setup. System setup. Channel assignments. So auxiliary two. Okay, so auxiliary two. We can even use aux one if we want because there's no flaps. So uh, we'll buy. We'll go to auxiliary two. So we'll use auxiliary two. That'll be channel. That's seven. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so. Let's, let's try it like this. Okay, so now we'll go into our forward programming again. Because the AS3X just kicked on. I heard the AS3X kick on right when we plugged it in, or right when we finished. It actually went through a total little spiel. I'll check the chat here in a minute. Maybe you guys are throwing me some tips, but uh, I'm pretty sure I, I got it now. Um And then we got to put that that aux 2 on a switch. So I've got them all on aux 2. Now we need to chip put that on a switch. We need to put aux 2 on a switch. So then we go to our system setup again. Now we're going to put aux 2 on a switch. Yes. And then we're going to go to channel assignments. And then we're going to go to next. And then we're going to go to aux 2. We're going to put it on a switch, you guys. And I'm going to put it up here on this top switch, which is what, what the other ones are on. So I have it on switch G, okay? So switch G is now on aux, which is giving us our our, 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 our AS3X. So uh, I've, got, I've got it on switch G. Now we're going to back out. Now we should be able to flick the switch and we should get gyro. So hold on. Let's see. Yep, there it is. <laughs> I'm a genius, and you guys know it. 
So that's how it's done, you guys. That's that's pretty simple stuff, you guys. So basically, we now now these gains are actually still up too high. So we're gonna go back in and we're gonna tame these gains down even more, okay? Because I mean, just look at the, look at the throw we're getting on that. That's insane amount of. Well, actually, the elevator's not too bad. The rudder's perfect. So it's just the ailerons we've really got to come down on. The uh, the elevator is actually not that bad. Uh, I'm going to bring the chat up on my phone, you guys, so that I can see it right here. Hold on. Give me one second, you guys. If you guys were dropping tips in the in the chat, I appreciate it, you guys. Um, like I said, I've done I've done two of these. This is the third one that I've done. So I just it just it just takes a minute to just kind of refresh and see what's going on. So let me turn down the volume. Who's that ugly guy? Oh, that's Dave's RC. Shit. Okay. Just the tip, says Air Marshal. So I was going to do my best impression of Air Marshal when he starts his streams. Hello, everyone. I'm the RC Ass Marshal. <laughs> what is up, dude? Oh, man. I love you guys, man. Um, we got 18 of you guys in here. That's sick, you guys. So, all right. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to go back into the radio, you guys. DX9, our trusty DX9, and <laughs> we're gonna uh, we're gonna um, we're gonna go into our Ford programming again, and then gyro settings, AS3X settings, AS3X gains. Okay, um, so let's turn the roll. Let's go down even further on the roll. We can probably let's try let's try 15 and see what that looks like. And then the pitch, the pitch was fine. So let's see what that does. Let's see what that does. All right, that's that's not that bad. That's not that bad. We're actually gonna go a little bit more down on that, you guys. We can actually go down a little bit more on that, you guys. So Setting, gains, roll. I'm gonna bring I'm gonna bring down the roll to 10 and see how that works. So I'm back completely out. That way it recognizes it. Oh, that's perfect, you guys. That is right where I want it. Elevator looks good. Elevator looks even. Yeah, you guys, look look at that, man. Look at that. Now let's check all of our other. We only have one really one function here. We got the gear that come down here, which are all working perfect right now. There is one mod that we're gonna do on this, guys, and that's gonna be in another video uh, where I'm gonna do a mod on the nose gear, you guys, because just like the Abani, the nose gear on this plane likes to wobble, and if you're on grass, that's not a good thing, man. You do not want your front gear wobbling. Because what's going to happen is as soon as you put your back wheels down and that front wheel touches, it's going to wobble and it's going to cause your plane to do weird shit like flip or roll or nose over. You don't want that. This is a lower profile plane than the Avani, but we are going to do that nose uh, nose gear mod. It's a very simple horseshoe mod that you put in there. And all it's doing is when the gear comes down, when the, when the gear comes down, it's going to lock into that little U-shape that you have, and it's going to prevent it from moving side to side. That U is going to hold it there. That 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 U-shaped bracket that you put in there is going to hold it from moving side to side so it doesn't have any slack or play in it. Um, that's exciting, you guys. So I do need to do an elevator adjustment. Uh, it looks like my elevator might be a little too high. I'm just going to do it manually right now. That actually looks like more where I want it, and I'm going to do it mechanically. I'm just trying to see where exactly I would want it. And that, that looks about right. I'm going to look in the manual real quick, which I have right here to the left of me, just to see where they, they would like you to have your elevators at once you get them on. Uh, it's very important that you guys, when you put these planes together that have a full flying stab, that you have that stab put in, this, put in the right place. Uh, right after this, we are going to do a CG on it. All right, so elevator, it says it wants it four millimeters down, which is right where it's at now. That's right where it's at now. It's about four millimeters down. I can see that the, the note that the it, that it's about four millimeters down. Let's check the other side real quick just to see if we're on the same page. Yeah, dude, they're, they are right even. 
the the elevators are as even as even can be, you guys. So uh, when you're putting your elevators onto this plane, it wants you to set them up at a neutral position of four millimeters down from the top edge uh, of the fuselage. You're going to be about four millimeters down. So make sure that you guys do that. Uh, another thing that we're going to do real quick before we get out of here uh, is we're going to uh, first check the chat just to see if any of you guys. Mike Bird, thanks, man. I appreciate that. Yeah, man, it's, it's actually, you know, once you do one, the second one, it gets a little easier. Now, this one that I just did here, this is just super easy, super easy. Now, I, I, I can do it with my eyes closed now. I was a little worried about doing it on camera because that's usually when I mess shit up. But uh, we actually didn't do too bad. So right now, uh, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to put we're going to put two rates in. We're going to put a high rate in. And we're going to put a low rate in. Now, my high rates and low rates are going to be different than most of you guys is out there for this reason and this reason alone. I always go middle hole to middle hole. So second hole in to second hole in, which gives me less throw anyways. So where your maximum throw, you might get an inch and a half to an inch and three quarters. Uh, I'm only going to get about an inch of movement. You know what I mean? So dumbing that down is not bad. The ailerons, even though I did go to the middle hole on both the aileron uh, control horn and the control horn on the servo, I'm still getting a lot of throw in these elevators, our ailerons, you guys. The elevator, not so bad. That's not that bad at all. Um, but I always like to do two rates, you guys, a high rate and a low rate. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to put, uh, we're going to do, we're going to go into our radio. All Dave's RC is scared of computers, just like recommend. Yes, yeah, I am scared of computers. Uh, the radios, however, are getting easier. Uh, I never had success in registering my DNX time uh, on the Hobby Horizon Hobby website, so we'll find it here soon. 6.30, just the 6.20, and running Hobby Eagle Driver. Deuce is wild. Why won't it let you register your radio? That's that's weird because me and – so me, so before I could before I could put the uh, the new um, the update on this radio, which it which it needed desperately, uh, Dave Dave walked me through the whole process. So you might want to get with Dave Marshall. Dave Marshall actually walked me through the whole process right online. Uh, things are very specific when you're doing it, like like case sensitive and all that stuff. I do know that we had to do it a couple times, Dave. Right, we had to do it a couple times before I actually before it actually let me register it. Uh, the numbers have to be in there perfect. You know, it's just it's just kind of a weird thing. So I actually had to do it like two or three times before it actually let the registration go through. And then once that happened, I was able. And then another thing is, is you can't use one of the new micro SD cards. You have to use like an older style one from like 10, 11 years ago. Um, what was it, Dave? It can't be like an eight or something. It has to be a certain number on it. Uh, it can't be one of the new ones that are like 10 or like, I can't remember, Dave. I can't remember now. It's been a while since we've done it, man. But, um, yeah, Dave walked me through everything, man. I ended up finding an old micro SD card out of one of my old cell phones from like 13 or 14 years ago. Uh, and sure enough, I put that one in there and it let me do it. So um, you'll know if you don't have the right SD card in there. When you do it, the screen will just come up black. It'll have this, uh, the bar, the bar, the, the progress bar won't even show up. It'll just give you a blank screen. So you'll know if, you, if, that, if that happens, you know that you need to use an older SD card which are kind of hard to find these days, you guys. They're not easy to find. Uh, I was just lucky enough to have one in an old cell phone. Uh, I put it into my computer. I downloaded every, all the pictures and videos that were on it onto my, my laptop. And then uh, I had a, a nice SD card uh, that I was able to use that was old an older version. Uh, but, yeah, Mike, I, I would definitely say hook up with uh, Dave Marshall. He walked me right through it, and everything everything came out fine. So, uh, yeah, that really sucks when you can't – when you have a radio that – is 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 able to do certain things and you're not getting what you can out of your radio um that that kind of sucks man so hopefully dave marshall can help you out man he was a huge help for me so we're going to go to our dr and expo so this is dual rate and expo you guys all right so first off we're going to put it on a switch i always put it on this back switch right here guys on the radio so when you're looking at the radio face on my dual rate switch is always the the two, two position switch that's on the back side of the radio right here. So well, first thing we're going to do is we're going to put that on the switch. One, two, we got the zero is our low rate and then one is a high rate. So that's where we're going to start. We're going to start right there. The zero is going to be our low rate and the one will be our high rate. So I'm guessing, so for ailerons, 
I want those to come down to about for our low rate. We're going to go, we're going to start it at 55 and just see what that looks like. And then, yep, well, actually, we can go a little lower than that. Yeah, that looks good. Okay, and then we're going to go down to our expo, you guys. And I always use 25% expo all the way around. 25 seems like a good number. And it's 20 never seems like it's enough. 10, 15 never seem like it's enough, you guys, especially on jets. Uh, I always go to 25. 25, it's, it's just one of those things where I found that 25 really is the spot where I want to be. And you could even go up to 30 if you want. Uh, but 25 has always worked for me. So now we're going to go flip our switch to our high rate. We're going to put that same 25% expo in. That's another thing that you want to do too with your, with your high rate and your low rate. You want your expo to be the same because when you go to flip the switch, if you're in the middle of a turn or something, when you're in, or in a dive or trying to pull out of something, when you need to hit that switch, you don't want your expos to be different because your, your, your position is going to be different here. You always want your, your expo to be the same on your high rate as it is on your low rate. Well, in my, in, in my experience, it's always good to have your, your low rate and your high rates expo be the same. Um, so our high rate, we're going to, we're going to go to 60, you guys, 60 on the high rate. So you guys can see the plane there. You see the aileron moving. That is our low rate. That's our high rate. It doesn't look like it's moving a lot because it's not. It's not a big jump from 50 to 60. But with that 25% expo in there, you guys, this thing is going to fly Krispy Kremes, man. Watch. You watch. This thing's going to fly like a beast. Um, so now, now that that's done, we're going to go up to aileron. We're going to switch that to elevator. We're going to go down to our switch, and we're going to put that on the same switch. Boom, right here. We're going to start off on zero. Zero is going to be our low rate. We already know that. So zero is our low rate. We're going to go up here. And you know what, guys? I don't like to mess with my elevator a lot. I like to have an authority on my elevator, especially with a full-flying full stab like this. So I usually only go 90 is my high rate. 25% expo, 25% expo all the way around, you guys. And we're going to flip our switch. Now we're in our high rate. Or sorry, sorry, wait a minute. I did that wrong. Let me go back to this. We're, that was our low rate. We want our low rate to be at 80. So 80. Yep, that's where we want to be. And then we're going to flip our switch, get into our high rate. We're going to move this down to 90. And this is just for the first flight. If I notice that it needs to come down or up, I'll, I'll move it accordingly. But basically what I want to do is I want to get myself in a position where my low rate is what I want to be flying around in. And then just to get myself out of trouble, I can flip into that high rate to give myself more throws, such as a landing, a takeoff, stuff like that. But usually I'll be flying around in that low rate. Um, and then we're going to go down here, 25% expo. Boom, done, 25% expo. So now we have our low rate and our high rate on both elevator and aileron. And the rudder, you guys, as most of you guys know, I don't ever mess with my rudder. I leave my rudder at 100% throw. There's been too many times where I've come in for a landing and it starts crabbing on me and it, it, it just freaks me out. And then I try to use my rudder, but oh shit, oh, I dumbed it down so damn much because when you go to take off, you don't want your, your nose wheel sensitive. Uh, it's just, I don't know. You, you, if you've flown jets before, you've flown jets before. When you're taking off, you don't want your nose wheel super sensitive. You want to just be able to move that thing back and forth ever so slightly. And what would happen is I would forget, oh shit, I have that on a separate switch because I don't want that on my high rate or low rate switch. So I'll actually put that, the, the rudder on a, a completely different switch just for takeoff so that my nose gear isn't super sensitive. And then I'll forget, oh shit, what switch was it? Or what did I do? You know, or, and then when I need to use that rudder, I'm not getting enough rudder authority. So I just said to hell with it. I'm, I'm not messing with the, I'm not messing. I will just, I will, I will just, you, I will, I will deal with a sensitive nose wheel. Uh, that way I don't ever run into that problem again, where I I'm trying to use my rudder and I'm not getting enough throw out of the rudder. So I just leave it right alone at 100%, and then I put 25% expo in on it. So we just go to our rudder, 
And then it's, it's just going to be, there is no switch for it. It's just going to be what it is. So we're just going to go 25% expo. And the only reason I'm putting that 25% expo in is because when you go to take off, sometimes you're using your stick to control the nose wheel. And then what will happen is your rudders are also moving that way. So when you go to take off, the plane's automatically going to be in a left bank or a right blank bank, depending on which part of the rudder you're using. So if I'm just using minimal movements to move my nose gear around, uh, that expo kicks in and allows for the rudders not to be moving while the nose gear can move a little bit. You see what I mean? That's, that's, that's where we're at here. So now that we got that set up, now we're going to go down to our custom voice alerts, you guys. This is why I went DX9. This is why I bought this freaking radio. It's why I bought the Tyrannus because I was so tired of not knowing whether my flaps were down, not knowing whether they were up, not knowing whether or not I was in high rate, not knowing whether I was in low rate. Uh, I, I really wanted to hear what I was in. So I decided that, hey, I'm going to get a radio that's going to allow me to do that because there was a lot of times where I was flying around with my flaps down. And, and, and why is this plane acting so weird? Oh, my flaps are down because I'm using a gosh darn tactic. Okay, so we're going to our custom voice alerts. We're going to add a new event. Kayla, she's in the shower. We'll go answer the door, please. Yeah. All right, so now when you go in here to your custom alerts, you're going to pick the first one that's down, the first one on the list, and it's going to ask you to pick a switch. Now, obviously, if you're, 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 your switch for your, uh, your, your high rate and your low rate is your H switch back here, then that's the switch you're gonna you're gonna pull. So position one, position one, we are our position zero. We already know that's our low rate. So we're gonna go in here and we're gonna find low rate. James RC rocks. What's up, dude? Go lay down. And sometimes they can be quite a far, quite quite far, quite far down. I might have gone too far, actually, already. Right, let's see. Yeah, I definitely went too high. Uh, too far. Um, there's my rates. Okay, so that's going to be my low rate. So low rate is our zero. Now we're going to go down here to this one, position two, and we know that's our high rate. So we just want to find high rate, which is right there, high rate. Now we back out. Now we're going to add a new event because I usually put my gear switch on this three position switch that's on the front. But since I've been flying with these DX9s, they automatically have it defaulted to this switch on the back, which is a two position switch, which is great. So I, I know that if I'm flying my tactic, everything's going to be on the front. My flats will be here and my gear will be in the front when I'm on a tactic. But when I'm flying Spectrum, I'll know that my flaps are here and my gear's here. It's not it's not too hard to figure out in your head. If I'm holding on to the DX9, I know that my gear is going to be back here in the back. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a new sound event. And then we're going to add a switch for that, and it's going to be our gear switch. There's our gear. All right, so and then position zero. That's going to be gear up, right? Yeah. Um, actually, you know what? Before we do this, we have to go back to – we got to go back to servo setup. No, not servo setup. Yeah, servo setup. No, we're going to have to look at it through uh, – All right, so yeah, okay, never mind, never mind. I got it, I got it. So go down to full do, 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 custom voice alerts, custom voice setups. All right, low rate. We got this on silent, so this would be gear up. All 
I think that the gear one is all the way down at the bottom somewhere. Just be patient with me, guys. We're going to get through this. Gear up. And then the next one is going to be gear down. And then gear down. Okay, so. No! I knew I was going to get them backwards. I knew it. So we're just gonna we're gonna switch these two. So which is okay because when you click on it, it puts you right back on that position that you were at. So it's just a matter of just flopping them. So now let's see. You're down. You're up. Nice, you guys. So that's done. Got our high and low rates in. High rates. That's awesome, you guys. Everything, that's good. And then, um, and that's usually all I do, you guys. That's it. I got my gear down. And if we had flaps, obviously, we do flaps up, mid, uh, you know, takeoff flaps, landing flaps, you know. But we don't have flaps on this plane. There are no flaps. I don't plan on putting flaps on it. It doesn't need it. Um, I can tell you right now, I'm going to like that low rate. Just just by the way it feels, I'm going to like the high rate. The high rate's going to be okay, too. It's not going to be overpowering. Which is that's that's the reason I set it up. So now what we're gonna do, guys, is we're gonna start with the we're gonna start messing around with the CG real quickly before we get out of here. So now that the radio's set up, we can go ahead, we can unplug the plane. Okay, and then we can shut the radio down. Whew! All right, so where are we at? Uh we're gonna do CG. Now I have the four thousand pack in there right now. We're gonna do the four thousand pack. Hi, buddy, how you doing? What are you doing? Cup kisses. Oh, just love. Oh, sure, sure, sure. You're gonna help me do the CG on the plane. You're gonna hold the plane for me. Uh, what was that for, dude? Ah, not in the face. Come on, man. All right. So, always important <clears throat> that you're gonna have it like the way it is when it's plugged in. So we're gonna actually put this back. Now that that's where I started it at. It's a little bit further back. And then we're gonna go into our book, which I already know where the CG is on it. I just we're just going to go in the book for you guys so that we can show you where the CG is at. So it has the CG at 32 millimeters back from the leading edge as of where. So where the plane actually buckles here, not from where the not from where the point is, the plastic point. But you follow that back to the first point where the wing starts going out and it's 35 millimeters back, which crazy enough. Puts us right on this line. There is actually a line right there. If this plane had leading edge slats, there is a slat line right there. And that is exactly where the CG is going to be at. So if we pick the plane up right there, bam, that's actually a tad bit nose heavy with a 4,000. That's actually a tad bit nose heavy. And that's exactly where I'd want it, anyways. So we could go, let's see, we could take it just for all you guys that love to get that high alpha stuff going on. We'll, we'll go ahead and we'll move this battery back and we'll see what when it becomes too tail heavy. So we want this to be backwards because your plane's going to be plugged in. You want that to stay back where it would be if it was plugged in. Because if I have those cables laying forward, then that's actually messing up our, our, our CG. So we're going to pick it up right here. Now. Right there is like perfectly CG'd, you guys. Right there. And that's with the battery back. So with a 4,000, I'm going to bring you guys in close here so you can see. So with a 4,000, that way you guys can see, we got the 4,000. We actually have it about a half inch behind this, this, uh, these little foam blocks that stick out here. It's about a half inch behind there. And if you're looking up at the front, uh, you've probably got about three and a half inches of wood plate showing and that was like perfect CG you guys So anything further back than that I, I would suggest not I wouldn't go that's with a 4,000 
Now we're going to put this big old chunky 5,000 in here. And we're going to see where our CG is with that. So let's take the big old fat 5,000. All right. And I'm, like I said, I'm going to start off a bit nose heavy. So I'm going to go right about there. Put our canopy on. We'll put our wires back here like they're supposed to be and put our canopy on. All right, and we're going to pick up here. Whoa, that's super nose heavy, you guys. Look at that. That is super, super nose heavy. So that battery pack has to go back. That battery pack cannot go that far forward. With a 5,000, you definitely don't want to be anywhere near the front of that board. So let's go ahead and open it up here and scoot her on back. Scoot her on back. I probably say that that's probably going to be – that's probably still going to be even nose heavy. So – Let's check it out. And I'm going to go in there and get a tape measure and measure back on the, at the leading edge of the wood. Mm. So if you want to run a 5,000 all the way back like this, you guys, you might have to be notching out a little bit of foam here, which isn't a big deal. But that's what I'm seeing so far. The hatch is not going down all the way. But let's see where she's at now. We're on our CG point. <laughs> And that is spot on, you guys. So spot on level. That's spot on level, CG. Let's go in and grab our tape. <clears throat> Which really isn't a tape measure at all. This is actually – tape measures are a little hard to use when you're doing this kind of hobby, you guys. So what I have is this. It, it is a – it's for measuring, like, your waist or your thigh or your arm or whatever for, like, getting suits and stuff. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure back now from the wood to the battery. We are setting back two and a quarter inches, you guys, or sorry, two and three quarter inches. So two and three quarter inches back from the very top of the wooden plate, not the U shape that they have cut out here where the wires go down in, but from the very edge of the wood back, it's two and three quarter inches would put us with a 5,000 at perfect CG. So I hope that helps you guys, man, because uh, I'm telling you right now, there's nothing more important than having a plane that is CG correctly. You start to take off, and that thing is any way, shape, or form tail heavy, you guys, you're going to have a rough day. You're going to be buying a new plane. It's going to suck. It's probably going to discourage you from discourage. It's probably going to discourage you from buying that model again. Uh, is what usually happens. Like ever since Tyler crashed the F-18, I just fixed it, and I'm still a little nervous to fly the thing because. I had that thing at perfect CG, and I think that it really wasn't him. It wasn't the fact that the plane wasn't CG, right? I think it was the fact that he just gave it too much up elevator when he took off, and it kind of set the plane in one of these kind of high alpha uh, deals, and he didn't know how to push the nose back down and continue on flying the plane. Uh, so, But still, it got me to the point where I was a little nervous to take the plane back up. So now I'm really stickler on making sure that these CGs are done correctly. Um, all right, let me read the chat real quick before we get up out of here, you guys. Yeah, GB Linden, it's it's perfect. It's 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 like I've tried using tape measures before, and they just you gotta buckle them and stick them. It's so much easier to use the cloth tape. Uh, thirty-two hundred. So so basically, what I've heard so far is you can get five and a half minutes uh, of decent flying out of a five thousand. You can get. You know, just a tad bit less than that on a 4,000. So if you use a 3,200, not only are you going to want that 3,200, probably a little way further up than what I had the 4,000. Um, and you're probably going to have, if you're going to use a 3,200, you're probably going to have to take your receiver and put it back here somewhere, not up where I put mine. Um, so if you, if you, if you're going to use a 3,200, which that's, I used the 3,200 and the 3,600 on my F-16, my version two F-16 that I sold to Eric. Uh, shadow ops and uh, I had that thing pretty far forward so and I and out and, and in that plane I didn't have the end runner either I was still getting three and a half minute flight times out of a 32 and a 3600 so uh, with these new end runners you guys should definitely be able to get even out of a 32 and a 35 you should definitely be able to get three and a half minutes to four minutes out of a flight if you're going balls to the wall the whole time you might want to cut it down at about you know three minutes you know and start thinking about landing If you get in the air with a 5,000, bad idea. 
GB. So GB, you don't you don't think that this plane should be flying a five thousand in it? And I I can kind of agree with that because when I flew the F sixteen, which is a similar size model to this, uh, she was very kind of piggy on a five thousand. Uh, uh, it, 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 it was kind of heavy and, and, and in one case didn't want to take off. So I stopped using the 5,000s altogether on that plane and I went down to a 3,200 and a 3,600 and the plane flew absolutely amazing on those two battery stuff, uh, on those two battery uh, sizes. So yes, GB, I believe, I, I believe you 100%. Just just from what experience I had with the F-16, I, I can I can guarantee you that she's going to be a pig. Uh, she's going to be she's going to feel a little heavy on a 5,000. Um, so I'm thinking that I'm going to fly 4,000s in this guy. I like uh, in, in this plane, guys. I like the way it fit in there. I like that I didn't. I'm not going to have to carve anything up or mess anything up. With, you know, cutting anything. Uh, if I'm using the 4,000, it's going to fit in there great. Hamilton Tanger just watched your video, bro. What a badass flight on that Raptor, bro. You definitely did a better job than me on my first time flying it. I was scared of it. I was I was kind of scared of that plane, man. Uh, so I, I kind of took it easy on it. Uh, I didn't really do any full speed passes on it. But I am going to take that thing down to the Pilot Ryan event. I'm going to ring that thing out. I, I am just, it's time. It's time to ring that plane out. Raptor is a monster, bro. It's 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 kind of a terrifying plane to fly, but at the same time, once you get it up in the air, you just realize just what it what a baby doll it is. Just what an absolute baby doll. <clears throat> Mike SSI is going out to fly. Is that what I'm? Is that what I'm catching here? Yeah, you know, you know, yeah, Shay, Shay has that, that same addiction that I have where you just want to have the throttle stuck up on the up position until the battery pops, <laughs> which ain't a bad thing. I mean, that's the way, I mean, come on, man. That's, that's, if you want to enjoy flying these planes, you're going to want to put that throttle up. I'm actually going out today as well, guys. I'm um, just waiting for this rain to clear up, and we're going out to get this flight in on this, man. My wife's in there taking a nap right now. I decided we'd come out here and program the F-35, and um, we're going out to fly this Venom today, and I have it tamed down now to where it should be fine now. It should be fine, and, I, and I'm, I'm definitely not scared of the plane. When it took off the first time, when I was out flying it for the first time, I actually have the video. I'm going to cut that video into the new video that I'm going to make today. But uh, what an absolute, what an absolute angel this thing is. It, it's just, I didn't even have to hit the trims. I, I could already tell that while, while I was flying it, I was not going to have to trim it. But I only went around one circuit because the back end of that thing was swaying around like this because that, uh, that y'all, that y'all uh, was up to 60%. So guys, remember that when you do the forward programming on an AS or an AR630, remember, it's going to have your y'all up to 60%. Or 60, 60, 60 percent of its travel, or or of its of its ability to correct. That's way too high for a rudder, you guys. As a matter of fact, I don't even like anything on my rudders. I don't even like a gyro on the rudders. As long as I have something on the ailerons and elevators that to help with landing, I don't even need a gyro. Period, you guys. I just like the way a plane comes in and settles in to land when you have a gyro. It makes landing. And uh, landings and takeoffs a lot easier, a lot easier. Um, team Hamilton, that's right, baby. I'm on Team Hamilton. I know that for sure. My boy's doing good over there, man. Over 700 subs, dude. He's he's rocking it out, man. He's doing a really good job over there. I mean, it took me it took me almost four years to get to 700 subs, guys. So uh, congratulations to Hamilton. He's moving up quick and fast, and he's putting up a lot of a lot of flight videos which is that's how you get your subs guys. If you want that, that's the deal in this hobby. If you want to make subs, if you want subs, you're going to have to go out and fly. You're going to have to fly at least once or twice a week and put up a flight video at least once or twice a week. A, a week. Uh, if you're, if you're not doing that, then there's either one or two things happening. You're not trying to build your channel 
or your channel is already big enough to the point where you don't have to go out and fly every every day or every week. Uh, but what, if you're trying to build your channel and you want subscribers or need subscribers to get over that thousand hump, go fly. Go fly and put up really good content with your flight videos. Or if you're a tech guy like Dave Marshall, you can just sit there and explain how to program receivers. You know, Dave's got his his whole line of what he does. He does fly too, but uh, Dave also he seems so knowledgeable on doing these things. Like uh, he's the one. Him and Mike Roska are the ones that taught me how to set these receivers up in the first place. So if you don't know how to do it and you want to learn from the people who taught me, go hit up Michael Roska. Go hit up Dave Marshall because those are the guys who taught me how to do this shit. I didn't read no manual. I went and watched their videos. I called Dave on the phone. How do you do this? I Michael Roshka texting me. How do I do this? Um, but yeah, man, I've just been itching all day to fly, man. I, I just like, I need to go out and fly. I need to put up a flight video. It's been a month since I put up a flight video. I have to go put up a flight video tonight. And uh, this plane is ready to rock and roll, man. And everything's tamed down now, ready to go. Can't wait, man. <laughs> Hamilton, whoop! Just, just go ahead. Just go ahead. You know, just, just, uh, just take it and throw it in the box. <laughs> uh, Dynam Corsair Maiden. Where the hell have you been, Shadow? I've already done that video. I already flew the Corsair. I already flew it, bro. I already got it's. All right, I already have a uh, flight video out on it. It did great. That plane flies amazing. The flaps work great, even though they're just one part flaps. Like it's not like your like your traditional Corsair where it has a multitude of flaps, uh, multiple flaps on the on the uh, on the inside of the wing. It's actually only got the like traditional like one step flap there, uh, and and it's not you know feathered out like the like the original Corsair. Not like the the Flightline or the uh, FMS. Um, yeah, man. Uh, but they work great. They work great, even even being the small one. Uh, yeah, I'll fly the Dynam Corsair again. I mean, yeah, absolutely, man. I don't have any batteries charged up for it right now. So we're just basically, you're just going to stick to uh, going out and flying this bad boy behind me tonight. But, uh, yeah, guys, I have a lot of planes that I have to made in the summer and I am going to get it done. I'm going to, I'm going to get it done. Come hella high water. Um, it just seems that sometimes taking a break, sometimes it helps. It helps motivate you to get back into it. And if you guys haven't hit that part, that, that point in your hobby yet, congratulations, man. Hopefully it never comes. But there does come a time when you just you just don't have that enthusiasm to go out and fly anymore. And I, I, it, it might just be a personal thing with me. Uh, it might be because my son lost interest. Uh, but at the same time, I can feel it coming back. And I think going down to this Pilot Ryan uh, event is really just – that's what's going to put me back into it again. It's really going to get me back into the game again. Um, it, it has nothing to do with motivation or laziness or anything like that. It's just the – tell you what really killed me was losing that Stinger 90, guys. Losing that Stinger 90, when I crashed that Stinger 90, I know George was nice enough to buy me a new sport plane and stuff like that. But losing that Stinger 90, man, that really, really did something to me mentally. Uh, and it's always been that way with me in this hobby. I get affected by losing planes and it's not that I just can't go out and replace it. I can replace any plane. Uh, it just sucks that you put that much time and effort into a plane and then something stupid happens and you lose it. Um, uh, and then it takes me a while to, to snap out of that and just get back out and fly. It really, really does. It's a process with me. Uh, it takes weeks for me to get back into it. Uh, and then I'll, I, I, I'll finally go back out and fly again and, and then, and then, you know, a week or two later, it'll hit me again. Shit, man. You know, I want to go out and fly, but I really don't want to lose this plane. I really don't want to crash it. That the, the, if, if there was no, if there was a possibility, if there was a way that you knew that you could go out and fly and you knew 100% you weren't going to lose a plane, that would make things so much easier. But unfortunately in this hobby, it is what it is. <laughs> you're either going to go out there. It's going to be a good time. You're going to fly. You're going to put a lot of flights on your plane. Uh, you're going to have fun. Or you're going to go out there, you're going to brown out, you're going to put the plane into the ground, and that's that. So it's a 50-50 deal, man. Nine times out of ten, you come back with your plane, uh, but there are those times where you go out there and you put a plane into the ground. And uh, just for me personally, it just takes a little while to get over it. 
Yeah, I'll give you a buzz in a little bit, man, after the wife wakes up. <laughs> like that Martina McBride song. Yeah. <laughs> Mike says, I'm most affected when I hit myself with a plane. Uh, that's a funny story, man. If you guys go back in my history, uh, my me and my nephew Tyler were out flying one day. And he was flying around the uh, the MiG-15 from, uh, like, uh, I think it was, what, what MiG-15 was that? Mm. Oh, it was the Motion RC MiG-15, uh, the free wing MiG-15. And he came in for a landing, man. And I saw that plane creeping towards me. Close, it just it looked like it was on line with me. And I'm like, Tyler, go back to the right. And he kept going left. And I'm like, Tyler, the right, your other right. And I'll be damned. He took that plane right smack. I, I, I tried to get out of the way, but I'm, I'm, I'm big and slow nowadays. And uh, I didn't get out of the way in time. And that thing smacked me in the arm. It bruised me from my shoulder to, to mid, mid arm. I, I had a massive bruise on my arm. Uh, so, yeah, man, yeah, uh, that – Though that I would I would much rather hit myself with a plane and know that it didn't take a lot of damage uh, than lose a plane completely though I, I'll take I'll take the hit I'm just glad he wasn't coming in full speed man because those little MIGs man those things go at about 60 70 miles an hour uh, on an 1830 C so you can, you can they can do some damage man so thank God he was just coming in to land. Yeah, Mike Bird. Yeah, exactly. Like Pilot Robert says, it's either going to fly or it's going to crash. <laughs> and, and 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 I think my my uh, my subconscious is always telling me, hey, man, if you don't go fly today, you're not going to crash anything today. <laughs> so I need to stop listening to my conscience. I need to get my ass out there and I need to start flying more. And that's exactly what I'm going to do for you. If it crashes, it crashes. Hey, I need to make room in my hangar for shit anyways, man. So if it crashes, I can salvage the parts. And throw the airframe away, whatever. I guess it's just we're just gonna have to do it, man. We're gonna have to get out there and get these flights done. Um, yeah, it'll definitely leave a mark, man. It does leave a mark. It leaves a, it leaves a mark on your arm and your ego. <laughs> Deuces, thanks, man. Yeah, you're right. You you can't get any better without flying, and I definitely need to practice flying. Um, so yeah, we're we're gonna get out there and we're gonna do a flight video for you guys today. Like I said, I'm just going to let my wife sleep for a little bit longer. It doesn't get dark here until about 7.30 to 8 o'clock now. So um, we're definitely going to go out, though. It's like 4.15 now. We'll probably be – I'll probably start – I'll start packing up the car now, get the radio in the car. I'm just taking this one plane with me. We're taking one plane, one battery, one radio, and one mic. Oh, <laughs> yeah, Shadow, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Deuces, man. I, I don't know. I don't, I'm not sure if you have the F-35 yet, but this thing uh, was like the nicest paint job, nicest fit and finish that I've gotten on a plane in a long, long time, man. Uh, definitely, definitely a nice little plane, man. Nice plane. And two beers. <laughs> and two beers, yeah. <laughs> Nice, guys. Look, man, 21 of you guys in here. I appreciate you guys stopping by. I just want to do this quick video on, on, on you know, setting up an AR630 receiver for dummies. If I can do it, you guys can definitely do it. Uh, it's not very hard to do. Uh, just sometimes you might have to go in there and mess with some stuff uh, and, and maybe even reset it and do it again if, if, if it doesn't work the first time. But the first thing that you want to do that I didn't do is the first thing that you want to do is go in there and put it on a switch. You want to put your auxiliary two on a switch, whatever switch you're going to use to turn on and off your AS three X. You want to go in there and put that on a switch. So turn your switch on. And then, and then once, once you get your switch set, then you go in and program your AS three X. That's how you do it. So do the switch first, make sure you go into auxiliary two or, or whatever. If you, if you're using flaps and stuff like that, you can still use auxiliary two actually. Uh, or auxiliary free, whatever, but put that on a switch and then make sure that on your AS3X, AS3X setting, it's the matching auxiliary. So if it's on the auxiliary two switch, make sure that you're inhibiting the AS3X on your auxiliary two. So that's it. That's all. That's it. It's pretty easy, guys. Pretty simple to set up, pretty simple to do. Um, and then make sure you go in. The first thing you want to do is go in there and tame down your throws. Tame them down. For God's sakes, tame them down. Because if you don't, you're going to have a plane that is going to be all over God's creation when you're trying to fly it. Uh, and there's nothing worse than taking off of the plane and she starts doing weird shit in the sky that you're not commanding. 
Definitely, guys. Thank you so much. I appreciate you guys stopping by. We're going to get up out of here. Remember, guys, uh, we have the giveaway coming up uh, on Friday, so make sure you guys are all there. It's the 30th, Friday the 30th. Uh, I love every stinking one of you guys. I'm Dave. This is Dave's RC, guys. Home with free giveaways, reminding you to fly for your die. And we are going to get out of here for the night, guys. Peace.